the R video tutorial on acceptance rejection sampling part two. We're doing this in R. If you haven't looked at the previous videos, you can look at the little card above or in the description below. The two previous videos will show you how the algorithm works and will give you the code for this basic setup where we're sampling from an F distribution with three numerator degrees of freedom and 20 denominator degrees of freedom. Here, what we're going to do is take this basic algorithm and we're going to put it inside a while loop and then see how things work there instead of having to run it over and over again like we did in the last video. So here, what I did is I just put some uh, header bars across here or comment bars so I can highlight the algorithm, what we're doing. Remember, we pull randomly uniform between some bounds. Then we evaluate that point. We create this ratio that requires this maximum value, which is over here, this blue line. And it could be any value that's actually above the maximum and it will work. Then we're going to generate another uniform between 0 and 1. And then we're going to apply the rule. If U1 is less than R1, then we'll accept it. Otherwise, we'll reject it. Okay, that's the rule that we're going to use. Now, what we need to do is make this more efficient. Because right now, we have to run it over and over again. And if you notice here, we got to reject that one. Then i got to run it again and reject it and reject it and reject it and reject it. And now, finally, it accepted one. So we want to put this inside of a while loop. So let's do that. So what I'm going to do first is copy and paste this. So I'm going to copy this because I don't want to lose what I have already. And if you've been following along, you don't want to lose it either. So simply copy and paste this. See it show right back up. And then we will put a while loop around it. So what I'm going to do uh, in order to save some spaces, I'm going to take some spaces out of this because we've already generated the code. You can easily see it. Now, what we want to do is only return this when a condition is um, satisfied. So what I want to do is I want to have a condition called keep one and I'm going to set it equal to zero. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to make my while condition keep one equals zero. Then it's going to keep doing this, keep sampling this until I find one to accept. So I'll close this off. I'm going to highlight this and then tab it in so that it's easier to see, easier to read as well. So what this is going to do is do this. Now, I have to be careful here because I have a condition that if I don't update the condition inside the while loop, it's going to cause problems. Now, remember, if we accept it, then we're going to turn this to a different value. So I'm going to call this keep1, and then I will assign the value 1 to it. Because we've accepted it, we want keep1 to be equal to 1 so that we can be kicked out of our while loop. We need that condition to be violated because it will no longer be 0. And this alone will cause our while loop to keep running and give us only the ones that uh, it accepts. And I'm also leaving these print statements in here so that we can see what values it tries before it accepts one. Now, I could in here put in here U if I wanted to and R so that you can see those as well. Maybe I'll do that here in a second. But first, let's see if it works. Run it. And bingo, you can see it rejected these values, then accepted this value. So we had to run through 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 values before it accepted even one value. When this is the demonstration of the inefficiency of the acceptance rejection sampling algorithm. There are other ways to improve this, but we're not going to worry about those right now. Right now we're focused on this algorithm. Okay, so now that I've got this, now I can actually know how to run it all the way and get one acceptable sample. If I were to run this again, it might take le fewer than nine runs. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, took nine again. Oh, that time it only took three to find one that it liked. Oh, this time it took a lot of them. And even some of the ones that you would think that it would have kept, even like this 0 0.9, it didn't like that because the value and the random sampling that it's associated with making this U value didn't accept it. So this is how we would automate this in order to get one sample out. Now what we're going to do in the next video is we're going to put this inside of a while or a for loop so that we can pull out a specific number of random samples. All right. So 
We're going to do this one step at a time because if you do it all at once, I think these videos will get too long and too confusing. All right, so I'll see you in the next video.